Yo, what's up? What's up? Ha <laughs> ha. Getting ready. I'm coming out. Ha <laughs> ha. Loads of discs. Okay. I'm Dr. Death. And I'm one of the Sample Kings. And I'm here to introduce you to our tons of beats. These are all disc samples, bass lines, choruses, vocals. Anything you want to know, we got samples. You ever thought of sample? Could sample? Might want to sample? That's right. These are full of samples. That's just one disc. I took out this whole pack. Wow. Amazing. The Wizard O, and one of the Sample Kings and Chief Engineer here at the Danger One Recording Studio. Now, some of the artists that I work with are Mikey D of Main Source, MC Shazzy of Electro Records, K Swift of First Alliance, who produced a number of tracks for MC Light and LL Cool J. In this video, you will learn how to hook your system up, you'll learn how to take your first samples, how to edit your samples, put your samples in a sequence, put your sequence in a song, and then save everything to disc. So without much further ado, here we go. Cause we're the Sample Kings, and nobody does it better. Okay, as we look at the back of our unit and work from right to left, we have our power switch for turning our unit on. We have our power cord receptacle for plugging our unit in. And we have our fuse holder for changing fuses. Next to your fuse holder is the optional accessory port. This port is used for upgrading your EPS. Mine has over 2.5 megabytes of memory, plus it supports a SCSI hard disk, so I can save my samples without using floppies. Moving right along, we have our MIDI through port. We have our MIDI out. For sending MIDI information to other sound modules and keyboards. And we have our MIDI in for taking information into the EPS. A good application for this port would be to sync our keyboard to a sequencer or a drum machine. Directly next to the MIDI in is our output expander port. The output expander is an optional device that is absolutely necessary for your hip hop production. It gives you an additional three stereo pairs for routing your samples separately to the board. Now this is very important when you go to the studio. When you get to the studio, 
and you plug your EPS up at the board and you can separate your samples then you could drop them out at will without having to sequence them so this will save you valuable time and money original EPS users will have a D-shaped connector and four stereo pairs 16 plus users have three stereo pairs and a round connector and the two devices are not interchangeable moving right along we have our pedal CV for control voltage for modulating our sounds. We have our foot switch which can be used to start and stop our sequencer or sustain notes. We have our left and right outputs which can be connected to a home stereo or a mixer. The output from these two jacks can be used in stereo or mono. But if you decide to use mono use only one jack do not use both next we have our audio in for recording samples into the EPS this jack can be used for either line level or microphone level signals finally we have our headphone jack for plugging a pair of stereo headphones please note that audio output for the left to right outputs will not be disabled and you will still be able to hear them all of those who jam at night in their bedroom studios don't disturb your neighbor or your folks let's look at the front of our unit as we look at the front panel the first thing we see is our floppy disk drive for loading and saving operations we have our three mode buttons which enable us to access various functions of the EPS such as saving and loading instruments, editing samples, editing sequences, or editing effects. More on this will be discussed later on in our tape. Directly next to the mode buttons are our 14-page buttons. Our 14-page buttons contain disk files, commands, and parameters that correspond to each of the three modes that I talked about earlier. Please note that all 14 page buttons are not active in all of the three modes. Certain modes will have more pages than the other two. Directly next to our page button is our data entry slider. We have our data entry arrows and our yes no buttons. With a combination of the three, you enter input into the EPS depending on what mode you are in. Next to our data entry controls is our display panel. Our display panel is divided into two main sections. The indicator lights which are in the top half of the window and a 22 character alphanumeric display which is at the bottom of the window. The indicator lights in the top half of the window tell us what mode we are in, what page we are on, or the status of the sequencer just to name a few of the functions the bottom half of our display enables us to see specific files parameters and commands under our display are our eight instrument track buttons these eight buttons are used to select deselect and stack various instruments loaded in the internal memory of the EPS. There are two LEDs located atop each of the instrument buttons. The function of the top LED tells you that there is a sound loaded in this memory location. The function of the bottom LED lets you know that that particular instrument is selected. Each instrument location also doubles as a sequencer track. So when you are recording, editing, or mixing sequences and songs, you will use the instrument buttons to select the current track. To the right of the display panel is our Effect Select Bypass button. This acts as the master controlling switch for the built-in effects of the EPS 16 Plus. The playback rate and polyphony of your unit will change depending on the effect that you have selected. Some effects will allow you to play up to 20 notes, while other effects may only allow you 7. Please note that 
original EPS users will not have this function available to them. To the right of the effect select bypass button is our sample button. This is the button that allows us to put sounds into our machine. More on this in the next section. Under the sample button we have our sequencer transport controls which are play, record, and stop. These three buttons control the multi-track sequencer. In our next section, we're going to take our operating system diskette and do a cold boot. This way we disable any SCSI hard drives and flashbang memories so that everybody's starting from the same spot. So without much further ado, here we go. Due to the many different configurations of EPS's out there, especially the used ones, we're going to need a method of getting everyone plain vanilla. So if you have a SCSI hard drive or you have flashbang memory, we're not going to be using those. We're going to co-boot our machines with the Ensonic operating system. To do this is very simple. We're going to take our Ensonic operating system, put in our floppy drive, and we're going to turn the machine on. It won't matter if we have SCSI devices hooked up, flashbang memory, or anything else. The machine will come up in a stripped down form. Do not touch the keyboard at this time as it is calibrating the keyboard. If your EPS does not boot up and the display reads keyboard fail retry, press enter yes to allow it to calibrate itself again. If after repeated tries, your keyboard does not come on, this would indicate a hardware problem and you should send it to an authorized repair shop. If you were to press cancel no, this will disable the keyboard completely, but the EPS 16 Plus will still respond to all button presses and incoming MIDI information from another instrument. Okay, let's get busy and let's learn how to sample. Okay, before we begin sampling, we will need an audio source to connect to our EPS. This can be a turntable, could be a microphone, could be a synthesizer, could be anything. Connect that to the back of your unit now. Press the sample button to the right of the display. The EPS will then access the operating system on the diskette that you booted with. If this disk is not in the drive, the display will read load OS disk, hit enter. Put the OS disk into the drive and press enter. The display will then ask you to pick sample instrument. You may select any of the blank instrument tracks that do not have an LED. In level detect mode, the display acts like a VU meter. There will be light bars spanning from left to right showing you the level of the sound coming into your EPS. The star represents the sampling threshold. The EPS will not begin recording until the signal crosses this level. The sampling threshold provides a way to make the EPS 16 Plus wait until the signal reaches a certain level before it begins to record. This level can be adjusted by pressing the up and down arrow buttons located in the data entry section. Before you proceed, there are a number of sampling parameters that you can adjust. These parameters are accessed by pressing the left and right arrow buttons while in level detect mode. These parameters are, number one, the sample rate, or the number of times that the EPS samples a sound into its memory. Number two, the filter cutoff. This cutoff frequency is of the anti-alias input filter this filter gets rid of anything above the cutoff frequency. So when you change your sample rate, the EPS automatically resets the filter cutoff to its optimum level. Third, we have our pre-trigger. This parameter causes the EPS to start sampling before it reaches its threshold level. So you may have extra time at the top of your sample that may have to be removed if you set this too high. Our next parameter is the input level. We have two choices. 
one of which is mic for a microphone or line level for a turntable, amp, or keyboard. And finally, we have sample time. This tells us how much sampling time is available, taking into account the current sample rate and the amount of free internal memory that the EPS currently has. Higher sampling rates give you less sampling time. Lower sampling rates give you more sampling time. It's very simple. Press the right arrow button once more and you will return to the level detect mode. You should adjust the audio source into your EPS at this point. You will have a good signal when the amp indicator light barely comes on. Once you have this level set, press enter and the alphanumeric display will go blank. The record indicator in the top half of the display will light while the EPS 16 is recording. Remember that if the threshold is set higher than zero, the EPS will not begin to actually sample until the input signal actually crosses the threshold. The length of your sample being recorded is determined by the time that you press yes once more. So if you never press yes, you will use up all the sampling time in the EPS. And this rate could be anywhere from one second to three minutes depending on the rate that you use. After you have pressed the yes button to stop the sampling, the display will flash, play root key. The root key is the note on the keyboard that the sample will play back at Unity. Unity is the same pitch as the original input signal. So whichever key you play in response to the play root key prompt, that key will play back exactly what you sampled. Many sounds require that you take more than one sample. For instance, a piano. You cannot take a low note and hope to stretch it to the highest note of its range because it would sound unnatural. Another application for a multi-sample would be a drum set where you could have the kick, the snare, and the cymbals in different keys inside your keyboard. The EPS 16 Plus makes it easy to multi-sample, so it's possible to have up to several samples within one instrument. Let's add additional samples to the sample that we just took. To do this, we press the sample button, and then we pick the sample instrument that we used before. If you look at your display, you will notice that it says unnamed. This always says unnamed for all newly sampled sounds. You also see the number of the current layer and which sample will be sampled after you press enter. The default here is new, meaning that a new wave sample will be created in the same layer of the instrument. Press enter. This puts you back in the level detect mode. You will now proceed to sample the new wave sample as you did the first. Adjust the incoming level so that it doesn't clip and press enter to begin sampling. Once you have the desired length, press yes again to stop sampling. You will then play the new root key, which should be different than the first that you want the sample to play back at. Once the root key has been assigned to the new sample, the EPS automatically figures out the split point between the two root keys of the samples. You can follow the exact same procedure as I outlined to continue making more samples if you wish. You can resample an existing sample by pressing the sample button and then selecting the instrument into which all of the multi-samples reside. You will then move the cursor to underline WS, which stands for wave sample. You do this by moving the right arrow button. Now you play the keyboard to select the sample that you want to redo. As you play the notes on the keyboard, you will see the word new replaced by the number of the wave sample you are hearing. As you play different notes, the wave sample number is updated 
When you hear the one that you want to resample, press enter to continue as before. Once you have the desired length, press enter once more and pick the root key. We are all done multi-sampling. That concludes this section. Now that we have our first samples, we want to make them useful for our hip hop production. But first, a sample king tip. Press the mode button marked edit on your keyboard or rack mount, followed by the button that says system MIDI. Your display should now say auto loop finding. Using your up or your down arrow key, set this parameter to on. This enables the EPS to help us find the starting and the ending points of our sample. Press the edit button once more and we will return to the wave sample information screen. You should see unnamed layer and the wave sample. Move the cursor to underline the wave sample field. You can do this by using your right arrow key. Next, select the sample that you want to edit by playing the keyboard and striking the note that you place your sample on. Your display should now show the number of the wave sample. Now, strike edit followed by the wave button. This page allows you to select one of the five possible wave sample playback modes. For our hip hop production, only the first four are necessary. Let's try forward, no loop. What this does is play our sample one time. Let's try backward, no loop. Our sample plays once, but in reverse. Now let's try loop forward. Our sample plays continuously and stops the moment the key is released. Finally, there's loop by direction. This is one of my favorite modes. Notice that the loop plays forward and backwards continuously and stops the moment I let the key go. I just played one horn sample four different ways. Did you catch how quickly and cleanly my sample looped? That's because I'm a sample king. You may not have had those same results, so now we're going to show you how to edit your sample to bring them closer together so that they'll loop the way that my horn sample looped. We do this by pressing edit wave one. Your display should read sample start followed by two numbers, one by itself and zeros in parentheses. Press your right arrow button to underscore the numbers within the parentheses. Now if you move your data entry slider or use the up and down arrows, notice 
how the numbers on the left side move up and down in big jumps. This is our course adjustment. If we were to underscore the left side and move our data entry slider or use our up and down arrows, you notice that the numbers move up and down in smaller increments. This is our fine adjustment. By setting this point, we can determine the starting time of our sample, like so. Okay, setting your start point is up to you. You know exactly where you want your sample to begin, and I know where I want mine. So now we move to the sample end page by pressing Edit Wave 2. Our display shows us a screen identical to the sample start screen, except it says Sample End. So now we make the same adjustments using our fine adjustments and our coarse adjustments to set the endpoint, like so. Okay, now that we have our start time and end time of our sample, we can also manually set the loop start point for the sample to repeat. Getting a good loop tends to be the most difficult part of sampling. But if you follow my example of turning on the auto looping by hitting edit system MIDI, EPS will pick only the optimized loop points that are most likely to work. Next, hit Edit Wave and select Loop Forward. Once you have selected this, hit your right arrow button until it says Loop Start. Move the cursor to underline the number in parentheses. This number in the parentheses is our Loop Start percent reading. While holding down a note, move it away from the beginning of the wave sample. That signals our second Sample King tip. You might want to go back to sample start and use the number in parentheses to determine what might be a good point to loop your sample at. Once you have determined this, put your loop start back to the number you originally had it on and go back to the loop start parameter. Again, this is edit wave three. Now that you're back on the loop start page, you can move the percentage to be the same as that that you found on the sample start page. Do this now. Next, press Edit Wave 4. This page allows us to set the loop endpoint. The loop endpoint can be anywhere you choose it to be except less than the loop start point. Let's try this. Okay, now that we have the best sounding loop possible, we can also do one more thing, and that's change the loop position. 
get to this page, press Edit Wave 5. Your display should now read Loop Start. This is the very same loop start that you had set two pages earlier. Changing this number moves both the starting and end points of your loop. Let's try this. Notice how the loop stayed the same size, but I was able to change its starting time. That concludes this section of the tape. We've taken our first samples. We found there was A in the beginning, so we cut off the front. We cut off the end, and then we looped the middle part. We even took the middle part, and then we looped it backwards. This to show you some of the powerful editing features that's available to you on the EPS 16 Plus. Here we go. Okay, in our last section, we talked about the edit wave parameters. In this section, we will use four of the command wave parameters that will be useful to our hip hop production. The first and most useful command wave parameter is to learn how to copy a sample from one memory location to another. That way you have a safety copy if you should make a mistake. To do this, hit command wave one and your display will read Copy wave sample. Hit the enter yes button and your display will now read to instrument equals unnamed. At this point, press a blank instrument track button, hit enter yes again and your display will now read to layer one. Please note that if you use your up and down arrow keys, you can specify the destination layer that you would like to copy to. Once you have selected this layer, hit enter yes. Using your up and down arrow keys, you may select copy parameters only or copy parameters and data. Once you have made your choice, hit enter once more. Your display will now read, Wave Sample Created. If you selected Copy Parameters Only, then you only copied information about dealing with the data within that sample. If you copied Parameters and Data, then you've copied both. Next, we'll truncate our wave sample now that we have everything specified. You must remember that the EPS will not truncate the wave sample if there are any copies that use the same data. To do this, press Command Wave 4. Your display should now say truncate wave sample. At this point, Press enter yes, and your sample will be truncated. If you observe any messages on your display, such as increment loop start or decrement loop end, then there's a problem with your loop if you decided to loop your sample. Adjust the loop end or the loop start as specified by your display screen and you will now be able to truncate the wave sample. At any point that you find that you no longer need a sample, you should delete it from memory. This will save valuable sampling time. To delete a wave sample, 
press command wave 2 and your display should read delete wave sample followed by a number of the sample highlight this field using your arrow keys and adjust this number so that it reflects the number of the wave sample you would like to delete once the correct number of the sample has been highlighted press enter yes and the sample will be deleted this concludes this section of the tape sequence on the EPS is made up of eight independent instrument tracks. The EPS can have up to 80 sequences in its internal memory at any one time. Each sequence can have a maximum of 12 characters in its name and each sequence can be up to 999 bars long, memory permitting of course. Sequences and memory can be chained together into a song. They can only be one song in memory at a time. Songs also have a 12 character name that you can specify when you first create it. In song mode, sequences are assigned to play consecutively in any order with up to 99 steps and up to 99 repetitions of each step. Within each song step, individual tracks within the sequence can be muted or transposed. Let's get familiar with the sequencer section now. If you look on the right side of your keyboard, near the sample button, you'll see three keys that say record, stop, and play. These are your sequencer transport controls. Pressing play will start the current sequence or song playing from the beginning. Pressing stop continue will stop the sequencer or play the current sequence or song from wherever it was last stopped. Pressing play while holding down record will start the sequencer recording on the current track from the beginning of the sequence or song. Pressing stop continue while holding down record will start the sequencer recording on the current track from wherever it was last stopped. Pressing record while the sequencer is playing will put the sequencer in punch in mode. It will wait for you to start playing before going into record on the current track. Sequencer status is displayed in the upper right hand corner of your display. If I press stop, notice how the stop indicator begins to light. If I hit play, notice how play comes on in the window. Hitting record causes the record indicator to light. Let's create a sequence. To do this, press Edit Sequence and select the sequence that you would like to edit. Your keyboard should default to Sequence 1 since there is no other sequences in the memory. Next, you will want to set the tempo of your sequence. To do this, hit Edit Sequence 2. Your display should now read tempo, 100, loop, 
on or loop off. I usually set mine to loop on. Next, you will have to select the clock source for the EPS. To do this, press Edit, Sequence, 4. This parameter tells the EPS that it is using either its own internal clock or its syncing to MIDI to a device such as a drum machine. Set this clock source to internal for our purposes. Next, press Edit Sequence 5. And you should observe on your display, click on. If it is off, turn it on and set your notes to quarter notes. I find that these are the easiest notes to use when sequencing. Next, press Edit Sequence 8. Set sequence count off to equal record. This will allow you to hear one bar of click track before the sequencer goes into record, but not prior to going into play. Next, press Edit Sequence 9. This determines the record mode. Right now, set record mode to equal replace. Anything recorded on this track previously will be erased. The sequencer will stop recording after one time through the sequence or song and enter audition play mode. Okay, now we are ready to record our first track. Select the instrument that you would like to work with first, preferably the drum track. We do this by pressing its instrument track button. While holding down record and play, the EPS immediately puts you on the edit sequence page. The click track will now begin to play, giving you the tempo. The first beat of each measure is emphasized. Adjust the tempo to your liking. Press the right arrow button twice to scroll to the tempo parameter and adjust the tempo by using the data entry slider or the up and down arrows. When you play the keyboard, the EPS will begin recording. The bar in which you start playing becomes bar one of the sequence. Press stop to end recording. The display will say X amount of bars, keep track. The length and bars of the first track determines the length of the sequence. Press enter yes if you decide to keep the track. Press cancel no if you want to erase the track and start over again. To record additional tracks, select a different track now. To do this, Press its instrument track button to make it the current track. Once you have the track selected, hold down record and play, and the display should read overdub. After a one bar count off, the EPS will go into record and record what you play on the selected track. Press stop. The display will now show you the play key page. When U is underlined and you press play, you will hear the new version of what you recorded. If you underline old and press play, you will hear your original material without the new parts. While the sequence is playing, you can toggle between old and new to decide which track you would like to keep. If you decide you like the new track, then underline new and press enter. The old information will be erased. If you decide you like the old material, underline old 
and press enter, the new material will be erased. Okay, let's pretend we had a four bar track and we made a mistake in the last two bars. What we could do is select the track to record on, press play, and once the sequence starts to play, we hit record. This will put the EPS in overdub standby. The overdub indicator will flash on your display and the sequencer will wait for you to play keys before going into record. As you start to play, the EPS will re-record that particular section. Press stop when done. You will see the play key page as shown before letting you audition the new or old track before deciding which to keep. It is possible to record another track with a copy of the same instrument. To do this, select the instrument that you would like to copy, then while holding down an unused instrument track, press enter. You have now made a copy. And if you record on this track, you will have two tracks of the same instrument with different information. We've just recorded a number of sequences, so let's try putting them into a song. Song mode is selected in the same way that you select sequences on the Edit Sequence page. Press Edit and double-click Sequence. Songs are composed of a number of steps. For each step of the song, you must define which sequence will play during that step, the number of repetitions that that step will play, and the status of each track, which can be play, mute, or transpose. The transpose amount determines how far any tracks will be transposed or shifted up and down in pitch. A song may contain as many as 99 steps with up to 63 repetitions for each step. Let's make a song. Press Command, then Sequence Song. Using the left-right arrow keys, scroll until your display says Edit Song Steps. Press Enter. A screen will be displayed that looks like this. There are four things that can be selected on this screen. On the left, you can choose INS, which stands for Insert Step, or DEL, Delete Step. This is normally set to INS for inserting new steps into your song. In the middle of the screen, you can choose a sequence which will play for this song step. This space currently reads undefined because no steps have yet been defined for this song. To the right of the display, you will see the step number and the number of repetitions for that step. For each song step you want to create, move the cursor to underline the sequence name, which currently reads undefined. Press the up arrow buttons to select among the sequences in memory until the display is showing the name of the sequence that you want to play during that step. Scroll right to move the cursor to the number of repetitions and adjust the number of times that you want the sequence to play during that step. Press the right arrow button again to reveal the following display. Here, for each step of the song, you can play, mute, or transpose for each track of the sequence. P means play, M means mute, and T means transpose. If you look on the right side of your display, you will see TRS equals plus zero. Any track that shows a T will be transposed by the amount shown on the right for the duration of that particular step. If you want to mute or transpose any of the tracks during a step, scroll until that track is underlined and use the up and down arrows to change the status of that track. Once the sequence and number of reps is correct,
press enter and the EPS will come back with step two. Continue with this procedure for the rest of the song. To delete a step anywhere in the song, go to the step that you want to delete. Move the cursor to underline INS at the left of the display. Press the up arrow key and change INS to DEL. Press enter and this step will be deleted. In our last section, we learned how to take our sequences and place them in a song. Before we can call it a day, we need to save everything to this. So our next section covers this functions. Here we go. Before a diskette can be used by the EPS to store data, a disk must first be formatted. Formatting puts information on the disk which the EPS uses to read and write files. In addition to formatting the blank disk, the format procedure can reformat a disk which has been used by another machine. To format a blank disk, insert the blank inside of your floppy disk drive with the label side facing up and the metal shutter facing away from you. Make sure that the plastic write protect tab is in the closed position. Now press command followed by the system MIDI button. Using your right arrow key, scroll until the screen says Format Floppy Disk. Press Enter and the display will read Disk Label Disk 000. Use the data slider and arrow buttons to give the disk a unique name which you can use to identify that disk. This is very important. The EPS will ask you for this disk name if an instrument or a song on the disc is used in a bank. Also make sure you write the disc label on the outside of the disc after you are done formatting it. Press enter yes and the display will read erase and format disc. Press enter yes to proceed. While the EPS is formatting the disc, your display will read formatting. This process takes about a minute and 20 seconds. When the formatting is done, the display will read disk command completed. Okay, now that we have our formatted floppy diskette, let's save our samples to disk. To do this, press command, then instrument. This page contains all instrument related commands. Select the track that you would wish to save. Press the left or right arrow key until the display reads save instrument. Press enter yes. At this point you will have to specify a name for that sample. So let's say fat beat. Hit enter and that will be saved to disk. You can continue saving the contents of your memory using this method. If you want to see other functions available to you, you can refer to the crib note sheet that you received with your videotape. Or look in your owner's manual under section 11, storage functions. If you wish to save the sequences that you have created, press command, 
followed by sequence. Using your left and right arrow keys again, scroll until it says save sequence or save all songs and sequences, whichever you prefer. Press enter and you will be asked to specify a name for your sequences or songs. Press enter once more and your sequences will be saved. In our last section, we saved our samples, our sequences, and our songs to diskette. That basically covers everything you'll want to know and need to know for your hip hop production. But I urge you continue reading your owner's manual or the special crib notes that I prepared to get more flavor when using your EPS. I'm the Wizard O, signing off. <laughs>